I'll record it for their benefit. And if you grab my arm outside of class and say, Psst, can I have a copy of that video? I'll give you a copy too. <clears throat> um, yeah, so the, the class, it's... <clears throat> actually, let me, let me go straight to code. So let's, uh, let's actually write a little bit of, of code together. And uh, I can talk about it as we write it. So go ahead and get into your editor. And we want to create a class. So the structure of any class is going to be the keyword class followed by And just to let you know, Austin, I'm probably, well, actually, you might be able to help as, as people type things in and run into problems, but it was going to be kind of a guided thing today. Um, what kind of class do we want to do? Let, let's do a, a class date. Okay. So this is the kind of the syntactic shell to this is the keyword class, the kind of the name you want to give it, and then you have a set of curly braces. And this does have a semicolon at the end. Uh, you don't have to type in the comments, but I'll say this is the class declaration. Uh, I colloquially called it a blueprint <coughs> for things you create. And there are, are uh, one, one of the things I didn't have time to discuss is that you are able to, not only able to, you generally have to describe how uh, you, what do I want to say, um, from the perspective of an outsider staring at a date, what are the things you are allowed to do with it and what are the things you're not allowed to do with it? And there are two key words that accompany those characteristics. One is public, one is private. And there's actually one called protected as well, but we won't talk about that this semester. And it's just those keywords followed by a colon. And then we can put stuff here and we can put stuff here. <clears throat> and what that means is if I have a date in my code, Anyone, any of the code is allowed to use stuff that falls under public. However, uh, nobody except date itself is allowed to use stuff that's in the area that's private. So let me get specific rather than being in the abstract. So here I'm creating a function called display. And I put it in the public area, and that means any code at all that works with dates, using dates, is able to call the display function on a date. Now what that function does yet, we don't know. But let me go ahead and jump down to, to main. So go ahead and create yourself a bit of a shell of a main here. You can throw in that return zero. Uh, but life won't end if you fail to do that. So lines two through seven are describing what a date is. Should we decide to create one of them? Again, it's just a blueprint. I haven't created anything by virtue of having put down lines two through seven. It's line 11 where the rubber meets the road. So this is where I'm actually creating a date object. Uh, you'll note syntactically, it's exactly the way we'd create anything in the language. So for instance, if you want to create an integer, you'd do that. Or if you want to create a float, 
you do that, <clears throat> right? So the syntax is the same, the kind of thing you want to create, and then the name of it. So that's all that, that's being done there. Now, syntactic-wise, again, I've got a lot of blanks I haven't filled in, uh, but what I want to key in on is this right here. That is how I, as a user of the, the class, would invoke or call the display function. And uh, the proper term for this is a member function, meaning that it is a, a member of, a part of, uh, a class, in this case the date class. <coughs> Now everything I have here is entirely correct. The only problem is I don't have enough information here for this to work. Uh, one of the key things that we haven't described is what the display function does when we use it. So we have no idea what this function does and more importantly the compiler has no idea. Uh, so I should get an error with it saying that it can't find display. And I, I'll go ahead and show that to you. So I try compiling this, and the, the key here is undefined symbols, meaning that uh, the, every, all the code we have is fine, but what it's trying to do is find where in the heck this function is, uh, so that when it's called in main, it knows what to do, and it can't find it. So that just goes to show you that a, a I guess you, obviously this is part of the class declaration, so this would be a member function declaration. So to declare it is, not, is to describe its existence, but not to describe what it does. So to do that, we have to actually write the function. The function is returns nothing, so it's void. The name of the function is display. Uh, so far, that looks like a normal C style function. Uh, what we have to do is we have to further describe what class this function belongs to. And you do that by just before the name of the function. So after describing the type that's returned and just before the name of the function, you put the name of the class and two colons. So now that's saying that the date function, excuse me, that the display function uh, that I'm defining, so this would be, oh, come on. This would be a uh, member function definition. I guess I don't need the cute quotes here. We'll just thank you. Now this is enough <coughs> to actually compile and run. Let's look at what it does. Uh, here we create a date dt, and now we call dt's display function. So when I call this function on line 16, what does it do? It comes up here, and it does nothing. So I, I, this is among the most useless of programs you can write, but it is fully uh, correct, and I should be able to compile it. Can everyone see the bottom of that? And am I bleeding? Okay, and it's got the edge of the screen too. So that compiles, but if I run it, obviously there's nothing that happens. So let's put together the final pieces of the puzzle. What kinds of things might you expect a date to have? If you're walking down the street and you come across one, uh, what, what kinds of stuff would you expect a date to have? Oh, I like that fruit. Um, yes, you, you've taken it in an entirely different direction, and I think I'm going to run with that. So every date that you might eat, uh, let me see, wasn't it Indiana Jones and the 
uh, the original what, Raiders of the Lost Ark, where the, the poor monkey died from bad dates. Is that right? Yeah? All right. So the first thing we have to know is poison. Okay, that's going to be true or false. Uh, one of the things that attracts us to dates is how sweet they are. So let's have some sort of integer for its sweetness. And I'll just say higher is better. It is more sweet. So, for this display, now we have some information uh, that we can go ahead and tell the user. So, we'll say something like, oh, uh, so we need to, let's come up here and go ahead and do the uh, pound include IO stream and the using namespace standard. Um, the date is this sweet. We have enough code here, we've added enough that you should go ahead and go out and try compiling. Don't try uh, running it yet. Well, you could run it. It's not going to look pretty necessarily. Uh, but make sure you can compile it. You should have no errors uh, that the compiler will generate at this point. So please confirm that. Just bow out of the editor, do your G++, and confirm that you are compiling successfully. Get all those syntax errors ironed out before we go on. And if, you, if you're having an error and difficulty tracking it down, just hold up your hand and um, Austin will uh, run to your aid. Yeah, go ahead. Is that KJ supposed to be there? Uh, the, oh, no, no, no. That's, that was me sneezing. There we go. All right. So now we, we've done the sweetness. We have to say whether or not it's poison. So we'll say if poison. Then what we want to do is we want to see out Marion Ravenwood's monkey is dead.
else. See out. Okay. So our problem is yes. So how come all that code that you have right there, the C F, how come that's not in that first display function in the class? You mean right here? Yeah. Okay, so they are one and the same. So what I would refer to as all of this stuff I would call the class definition. So the declaration uh, just describe, for lack of a better term, the shape of the class, what kinds of things it'll have if you create it, and the kinds of things you can do with it. This is the class definition. Then is defining or describing each of the functions that you declared up in the class declaration. Uh, it's a good question. Can you do it within the class? Uh, actually, you can do it within the class. And just to show you what that looks like, if I was to do it in the class, I'll comment that out for a minute. I'm not going to leave this code here. I would dispense with the, the semicolon, and then I'd put a set of curly braces there, and then I'd have my code just like that. Okay. And actually, if you use uh, later learn Java, which is uh, very, very closely related to C++ and syntax. This is the only way you're allowed to describe those functions. Uh, that said, uh, a combination of heritage and the way that the source code gets compiled down, uh, it ends up being more the exception than the rule that you'll stick a function inside of uh, the class declaration. Uh, without describing why one of the side effects of putting all of your definitions in here is your code can tend to be a lot larger, particularly when you get to larger projects with many files. Um, <clears throat> the counter argument is this space is cheap. Um, so I, I, I guess I, as far as uh, getting into the debate, I'll table that for a later day. Uh, but suffice to say, you can absolutely do it. Uh, no one's going to raise an eyebrow. In fact, what, what I do frequently is if I'm busting out classes real quick, if I have one that's just uh, a member function that's just one or two lines of code, for convenience, I'll just throw that definition right in there. Uh, so I certainly do it. Other people do it. No one's going to bat an eye if they see that. If they see that in your application with 20 classes, you've shoved everything up in the class declaration, it's going to raise the eyebrows, and they're going to wonder why you did that. <clears throat> one, one of the things that we'll be doing is we will be splitting the class deck, not, the, not right now, but in an upcoming lecture, is we will be uh, splitting the class declaration and the class definition into separate files. Uh, so anyway, uh, this is then defining line 10 is declaring that there is a display function that returns nothing in the date class and this is what that function does. <coughs> so what is, excuse me, what am I still, what dots have I not connected? What's incomplete? 
what's not ringing true here? The poison and sweetness. Where did those values come from, right? The dates don't grow on trees. They're, no, wait. Um, yeah, we've, we've got to, we have to set these to values. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a function called set. It doesn't need to return anything. We'll call it set. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to provide a Boolean and I'm going to provide a, an integer. And you can imagine what those represent. The integer would be the sweetness and the Boolean would be the, whether or not it's poison. So now I'm going to use my newfound Vim skills and I'm going to go YY to yank a line. Mosey on down. If, I guess we can put it above the display function. That'll help people typing in. I'll just paste it there. Delete word. Get rid of that semicolon. Put some curly braces. And what else do I need to do with this function? What does this function belong to? The date class. So you have to say that this function belongs to the date class. Uh, this early on will be a very common error that you get, and if you see one of, and the error you'll see is what we saw earlier when I compiled, which was that undefined symbols error. If you see undefined symbols, that frequently will mean that you've forgotten to uh, provide what is referred to as the scope of this function, saying that it belongs to the date class. So help me write this. If if I'm given a Boolean P and an integer S, what do you want to do with that Boolean and that, that integer? So if I, I stand, I get one of you up here, and I won't, I won't do it for time's sake, and I stand you right here, and I say, here's a Boolean true, and here's an integer 5. Thank you. What are you going to do with it? Put them in the buckets called sweetness and poison. Put them in the buckets called sweetness and poison. So... Okay, right? They're part of you. The date has a poison. The date has a sweetness. And if some outsider gives you those two pieces of information, that's what you want to do. Set those values that are part of you. So poison equals P. Sweetness equals S. We're assigning S to sweetness, we're assigning P to poison. Now let's go down to main. Now we can go ahead and complete our... So I want the date to be at a sweetness level of 9, and I do not want it to be poisoned. So how would I do that for DT? I want to set it to false and 9 <coughs> for DT. How do I call the set function for DT? DT.set. And I provide false, and I provide 9. Is that right? Is that the order that I have it? Yeah. Go ahead and try compiling and running it. This thing should compile and run if all is well now. I'll go ahead and do it real quick and then I'll bring my code back up so people can see it. So the date is a sweet nine, happy monkey. And I'm not sure what code to bring up would be most beneficial. I'll leave that up for now. Um, maybe I'll bring this up. Again, if you're running into issues, 
uh, raise a hand. If you need me to show something different on the screen, just tell me and I'll accommodate. Any other questions? Yeah. All right, so uh, let me go up a little bit higher here. So let me return for a moment to five lines five and eight, this public and private specifier. Those specifiers are for the benefit of uh, sometimes I use the term outsiders and sometimes I use the term users of the class. Okay, So when I was standing up here and I was interacting with the date, I am a user of that date. I am an outsider from that date's perspective, which means the only things I'm allowed to do with this date are those things that are in the public area. Okay, So if you want to see the effect of that, Take line 10, your display function, dd, to delete it, and come up here and type p to put it, and make the display function private. Right? Again, all this in main is a user of the class. So now this user of the class, in this case main, is trying to use a function that's considered private. And see what the effect is of trying to do that. So I come down here. Again, all I've changed is I've just moved it from public up to private. I type G++ code.cpp, and it says display is a private member of date. 
So now note that I can't even create an executable any longer if I try to use something that I'm not allowed to use. Okay, so that's the distinction between public and private. So, uh, so as a, a general rule, it, when you get into the, some of the advanced stuff, you start looking at the, at the exceptions. But as a general rule, any data that you have will be private, and any functions that you have will be public. Any questions on that? So I've put two more functions here, and I haven't defined them. I've just provided the declarations. So I want you to do two things. One is I want you to write the function definitions for those two functions. They're pretty straightforward. One is just setting the Boolean to false. This other one is going to take a number, and you'll just simply increase this by that number. Yeah. So you'll do that down here, write a couple function definitions, and then the second thing is in main, add some code to test those two functions that you wrote. Okay? And uh, go ahead and raise your hand or give a shout out as you run into issues with that.
Since, since it's already set to false, I don't think poison the day he just still trying to poison the day. Since it's named poison the date, I just assume he won't have to make it. So the day was poison. So it just may make the poison variable true. Um, and then no, no, the make sweeter has to be an integer. So like you have to do a, a probably. I don't know if he wants a user input, so I'm gonna put a user input. So like C N and then make that number more and then add more to sweetness. So sweetness plus more. I got this backward on the logic. Poison the date should set the, the Boolean to true. Excuse me. That'll poison the date. Yeah, 
But that is going to have the name that I gave the motion is Poison the Day from line 11. So don't call it Make, call it Poison the Day. Why is Jaguar screwed up so much? I don't know. You're the you're the lucky semester. Uh, it's never had problems in the past. There were uh, multiple hardware failures recently, and when there's more than one piece of hardware goes wrong at the same time, it's hard to track down. Uh, so that's been tracked down, and then things have been fixed enough to make it stable, and then I think, like over spring break, they're going to be doing some more major uh, hardware refitting to kind of pull away the duct tape and put something proper there. What did they do to Jaguar? Yeah, so uh, it, it, it isn't, this is unusual. Normally it's very stable. How long have they had to uh, since before there were computers. I don't know. It's, it's, uh, I don't know how long Jaguar's been around, but certainly periodically they upgrade the hardware, but the name stays the same. <laughs> it, it prowled around the internet before it was called internet. <clears throat> All right, so that uh, ends the session. Um, we will go ahead and dive into the project uh, in lecture.